This is Ribbon Road, one of the DLC courses in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Originally released in Mario Kart Super Circuit, it has a characteristic design and a wild layout, making for one of the most unique remade courses. Most players of this track have battled against each other in online races to be the first to the line, but for the past 5 years, some players have been playing this track in time trial mode, competing to be the fastest in the world. Ever since the game was released, players have been perfecting the way these courses are driven, pushing their records as low as they can. Today, the difference between the world record and second place is often only a few hundredths of a second, an incredibly tiny margin. Most new world records improve the previous one by a fraction of a second, but on December 5th, one of the top players surprised everyone when he beat the world record of this track, not by a few hundredths, not by a tenth, but with the biggest world record improvement in more than five years. This is the story of Ribbon Road 150cc. First we'll take a look at the layout of the track. Ribbon Road starts off with two right turns, leading up to a boost ramp. Here you do a jump across the road and drop down onto a green ribbon, where there are moving mecha koopas that you have to avoid colliding with. Then you take a wide left turn to collect these three coins, to increase your vehicle's top speed. Going out of your way to collect them loses some time temporarily, but the slight speed increase gains a lot of time throughout the run. The track then continues to another boost ramp, where you jump across the green road and onto a blue ribbon. Ribbon Road has moving obstacles that have to be adapted to, like the walking Koopas and the swaying Koopa Clowns at the end. These two obstacles are easy to avoid, but there's one that can't be avoided. The blue path. On the blue ribbon, the road no longer stands still, and becomes really difficult to drive on. This waving road makes Ribbon one of the most advanced tracks in the game, as driving on a road that changes shape has its problems. When you cross a wave, it will send you into the air for a moment, and if the wave is tall enough, you can do a trick into the air, which gives you a speed boost when you land again. Tricks gain a lot of time, and are beneficial in most spots you can do them, but until you've landed on the ground, you can't change what direction your cart moves in. So players found that the fastest way to drive this section was to do one trick on the ribbon and a right drift rather than tricking again. This ramp sends you back onto the ribbon, but this time the waves have a different shape. On this part of the road, the waves are much bigger than earlier, so big that there's a high chance you won't land on one. Therefore, you won't always be able to get a trick before driving onto the glider cut. Then you just go for a mini turbo before driving off the ribbon. Then the track continues to a glider panel, where you go flying to reach the road on the other side. A mushroom shortcut in the final turn, and the next lap begins. One week after the game was released, the world record was a 149.8 by the player Extreme, a good run considering how new the game was. Drifting is key to driving fast in Mario Kart. When in a drift, your vehicle builds up a mini turbo, commonly called MT. When you stop your drift, whatever MT you've built up will activate giving you a great boost in speed, and Extreme did a good job at this. His record would stand for a month before another player would set their mark on the track. LuigiFan2 LuigiFan set a new world record time of 149.466, but the most outstanding part of his run was his new strategies. MT Boost Panels In most Mario Kart games, boost panels serve as a break from drifting, often placed before big jumps to make sure you make it across. When you touch these panels, the cart will accelerate to max speed for about a second. But LuigiFan found that if he released the mini turbo on the boost panel and then tricked off it, he'd reach an even higher speed, zooming past Extreme's world record. This method of releasing mini turbos on boost panels can be done on the red and the green ribbon. Releasing a mini turbo before tricking, commonly called empty tricking, gains a lot of time if done well, and isn't only used on boost panels. The world record would trade hands for the next few days as players optimized this technique. Colvin, Extreme and Carson would bring the record down to a 148. Players had learned how to drive the track pretty well at this point. On the blue ribbon, they skipped the trick if needed, and drove the rest of the track as fast as they could. But there was one player who would stand out, setting a new standard for the already chaotic track. Super FX. After only a day of learning the track, he got the world record. He made a big mistake in lap 2, missing the drift for the MT boost panel, but he continued the run and got the world record despite losing nearly half a second. With such glaring time loss in his run, he wanted to improve much further, and in the next two days he would bring the record down a full second, 
with refined driving and a few new optimizations. One of them is actually called Ribbon Road Tech, where spinning the cart the same direction you're drifting makes empty tricks faster. Superfax also used a new vehicle, the Mercedes Silver Arrow, a Grand Prix car from 1934, which somehow is one of the best kart bodies in the game. Luigi Fan did a run where he used the Silver Arrow's wide hitbox to trick the edge of the first ramp shortcut. That way, he could trick a wave and get a trick boost before the next ramp cut. Superfix found that this low trick didn't gain time, because in his next runs, he did something even faster. Stopping a drift without releasing an MT loses a lot of speed, but if you do a very short drift a couple frames before a trick, you don't lose speed, but get less height from the trick instead. This is called a drift trick. This technique made him just fast enough to get an MT trick before the glider cut outclassing Luigi fan's idea. The Silver Arrow's large hitbox also made it easier to avoid airtime from the waves, so Super Effects stuck with the vehicle. He would get a 147.798 on the track, a solid run where every segment was driven smoothly. He would get another smaller improvement around half a year later, but there was an apparent problem with improving the world record on the track. Driving on a road that changes shape leads to many problems. In the first lap, the waves on the ribbon are in optimal spots. You can trick and drift onto the ramp, and then you can do an empty trick onto the second ramp. But in the other two laps, it becomes situational. The waves move the exact same way every run, but the earlier you reach the wave section, the further back each wave will be. This leads to something called pace locks resulting in potential setbacks and breakthroughs every lap, caused by the wave cycles. In lap 2, Superfex couldn't do a trick before the first ramp cut, because he'd fall off the track. But if he got to the wave section sooner, he could have tricked this wave to get even further ahead. But here's the catch. If he got to the second wave too early, he couldn't get a trick of this wave, which loses more time than the earlier trick gained and some more. This is what a pace lock is. Even if you somehow got an absurdly fast run, and managed to remain ahead after skipping the trick, you'll have to slow down again so that the waves don't pace lock you in the next lap. The track was brutal. The fastest approach was to go all in on the driving, and gather a significant lead. That way you could remain ahead after the time loss, known as a pace break. But the fact that driving faster than the world record only profited if you had a great lead wasn't inviting. Superfex would hold the world record for the rest of the year. The driving was far from perfect, which was something he knew, but it wasn't tempting to improve further for the time being. Around half a year later, a new player would become the first to beat Superfex on the track. Lemon. Lemon would get his first record on the track, being 3 tenths behind Superfex entering the final lap. But he had found a simple new strategy. Before the first wave trick, he didn't hop to the left like Superfex. By not hopping left, Lemon's drift would be sharper, and he didn't have to use the brakes during the trick boost, allowing him to keep a lot more speed than before. With this, Lemon would improve the record many times, and Superfex returned to learn the new approach himself and they battled for the number 1 spot. The record went from a 147.7 to 146 in only a few days, and Lemon got the first sub with a 0.986, a great time barrier to break. Thanks to the new strategy that was found, both Lemon and Superfex were now fast enough to reach the final wave just in time to get a second wave trick. Lemon discovered a new time save, and it led to another time save, which became the first difficult pace break to perform. It gained a lot of time and was only possible if you drove really fast, so it made the leaderboards very split. If a player was fast enough to catch that cycle, they might as well go for the world record, since they'd have to be tied with it up until that point for the trick to work. No other players were up for that task. Superfex reclaimed the record with a 146.853, where he lost a bit of time on the red ribbon lap 2, but with two otherwise great laps, he felt satisfied with his run. At this point, the Ribbon Road world record was strong. Superfex run was really fast, and there were no pace locks affecting the world record, and it didn't look like this would change. Players couldn't trick the wave in lap 2, 
and besides that one wave, it didn't look like anything new could be found. There was no room for mini turbos, and definitely no more tricks. The track seemed solved. Superfex record would stand for a long while. No other players dared to go for the pace break trick. Nearly a year later, Lemon returned to the track, and he quickly found something new. He found that he could release an MT early and hop onto the glider shortcut, releasing the mini turbo much earlier than super effects, gaining around a tenth. He also found that using roller tires was slightly faster overall. He reclaimed the world record on the track, and over a few months, he improved it down to 146.594. This record went on to stand for more than a year, and was regarded as one of the strongest world records in the game. Lemon and Superfix had held the record here uncontested ever since the game released. It had been two years, and only one new strategy was found, while the other courses in the game saw plenty. But on March 31st, that changed, when the player Yoshi discovered something game-breaking. In Mario Kart 8, it's common knowledge that trick boosts activate when you land. Tricks are usually intended to give a single boost after a jump, so to prevent these boosts from activating too early, the developers made it so that for a moment after tricking, the trick boost can't activate, even when on the ground. Yoshi was playing Ribbon Road, and on a whim, he tricked the wave a bit too early, but because he held the R button longer than needed, it initiated the drift without triggering the boost. And with it, he did this. Almost like magic, an unthinkable time save was found. Yoshi delayed the trick boost, drifted through the air, got the trick boost, and MT tricked the ramp. It was incredibly smooth to watch. Doing the strategy gained so much speed that Yoshi nearly jumped over the glider panel. It gained half a second and was consistent to perform. Seeing the new strategy threatening his record, Lemon returned to the track to defend what was his. He would be quick to master it, and only two days after its discovery, Lemon set the first world record implementing it. A 146.523. This strategy is called Delayed Trick, and it's reliant on releasing this MT in time to MT Trick the ramp. Lemon got it just in time with the heavy silver arrow, but some players opted to use the infamously overpowered Biddy Buggy for its maxed mini turbo stats. This made Yoshi's Delayed Trick much easier, but also made the rest of the driving more consistent. The players Konkon and Landros got a hold of the world record using this vehicle. As players got faster and faster, Looking for new ways to drive on the waves was sensible. The biggest setback in the world record was that you couldn't trick the second wave in lap 2. There's no point in tricking a wave that far from the optimal path. The boost would be spent getting back on track. Yoshi saw that players were using the Biddy Buggy in records, and went to improve his time. But in one of his runs, Yoshi decided to drift off the boost ramp, losing out on the trick and heading very far to the left. He went drifting through the air, and when he landed, he did this. Yoshi charged an SMT while in the air, used it to SMT trick the wave, before drifting onto the ramp and doing another MT trick. He had found another brilliant strategy, this one also gaining around half a second. Yoshi mentions he felt happy rather than surprised when he discovered his two methods. Something funny about his experience is that both of his strategies were found unintentionally, as a result of him messing around as a pause from doing attempts. Two years went without any player finding a strat, and Yoshi suddenly found two on a whim. They were two very distinct strategies as well, unlike anything seen on the other courses. Both of them were on the waving ribbon, and just like the track, the limit didn't seem to stand still either. The fact that a world record stood uncontested for a year, before two unthinkable strategies shreds it to pieces, really signified the track. Yoshi played the track using his recent strategies, and only a few days later, he beat Lemon's record with a 146.098. This strategy gained a lot more time if using the Biddy Buggy.
and doing it optimally was luck based. In Yoshi's run, he got very lucky and clipped the ramp's edge before landing, stopping the cart from sliding to the left. Yoshi's record would stand for the next couple of months. The track became much harder to play after Yoshi's discoveries, but they also created a lot of room for improvement, and the leaderboards changed a lot, as players flocked to the track to claim a spot. One of them was Alberto. Just like the others, Alberto wanted to see how good of a time he could get with the new strats. He learned how to drive the track incredibly quickly, and after playing the track for a while, he mastered the driving aspects and aimed for the world record. He improved his personal record many times, and one day, he failed the world record run because a fly disturbed him in lap 3. He would break through later that day fortunately, and got the world record, beating Yoshi by 2 milliseconds. Alberto would go on to improve the record many times, getting the first run below 146, a 145.967, an incredible time barrier to break. But Alberto had some competition. Another player was also going for the world record. A player called Vonne started playing Ribbon Road some time after Yoshi's two strategies were found, and got really close to his goal before Alberto improved the record to a 145 before he could get a hold of it. But Vonne didn't give up. He kept on playing, and after a few days of trying, he got onto a run with a great start, where he made the edge clip. He drove lap 3 as fast as he could, and when he finished, he clocked in a new world record at 145.855. The track had changed so much in only a few weeks, and the players were really pushing the record down. First going close to the edges with precise drift inputs, before drifting through air pockets, minimizing airtime, and exploiting the drift mechanics to gain several seconds. Alberto managed to beat Ronnie's world record by a frame without the edge clip, proving that there was still room to go even faster. But unfortunately, the recent strategies led to the track becoming pace locked again. Alberto drove a run so fast that in lap 3, the final wave was too far up for him to trick correctly. The delayed trick boost gained too much for it to be skipped, but to do it, you need a safe trajectory so that you don't fly off the track. Going higher on the wave didn't look like it would solve anything, since it requires a very wide approach to get a trajectory that even works. Improving much further seemed unlikely. Alberto's run was close to getting pace locked so he retired from the track for the time being, aiming to reach the limit at some point down the line. Alberto went on to keep the world record for one and a half year, improving it a few times throughout this period. The blue path's waves decided everything, with the best methods being altered whenever players drove ahead of their record. While on the red and green paths, the driving had stayed the same for four years, and the players who seek the best ways to drive all the parts found some really innovative solutions to reach further. At some point, you have to believe strategies like these will stop emerging and start viewing the track as one you can optimize, to focus on perfecting one approach like most speedrunning is about. No course is boundless, and though players discover strategies many times, there will be a limit to how fast players can drive the wave section. But the track wasn't done yet. Gliders in Mario Kart have some special properties. In 150cc, drifting off gliders is much better than just driving straight. The effective way of doing this is to hold your drift until the glider activates the mini turbo for you. Dive down diagonally, and then back up again. This increases your speed, because the game stacks your forward velocity with the horizontal momentum the steering gives, combining the vehicle's force and handling to move you towards your destination. But there's a bug that can be used to further amplify this. Motion Glider By pausing your run right before a glider, time freezes and you can enable motion controls. When you resume, you can steer the glider by tilting your controller, but if you steer with tilt controls and the joystick at the same time, the two input methods overlap, and for some reason, the game expands your handling range a lot, making some ridiculous glider movements possible. Almost all tracks with gliders have eventually seen motion glider implementation after Lemon set the first world record using it on Bowser's castle. It's an easy way to gain time, it simply increases your speed for a second, but doing it only gains time if you drift off a glider with a mini turbo. On Ribbon Road, 
there isn't room to charge one before the glider activates. But Alberto found a new unconventional method when he did this. Alberto drifted off the glider ramp to angle his cart diagonally, skipping the glider trick to set up for the motion glider. But the speed increase he got from diving down gained the time back and some more. It gained a third of a second if done all three laps, and with the new strategy, the record was bound to go down once again. Alberto improved his world record down to a point six oh three, and the strike activity caused more players to return to the track. One of them was Army. Army holds the world record on Ribbon Road in 200cc, where the complexity of the blue path is increased. He already had a great time on the track in 150cc, being 5th place on the leaderboard. So when he heard about even more strats being found, he wanted to go for double world record. As I mentioned earlier, the pace lock in lap 3 was near, but due to minimal testing, Alberto's old estimate was wrong. By going higher up on the wave before tricking, players managed to get the delayed trick when ahead of the record, just by drifting sharper. It's hard to determine when the pace lock took effect just by looking at the wave's shape, so it's easy to overlook how much faster you can go. With the pace lock temporarily out of reach and new strats, Army got to work, and after two days of playing, he got a 145.472, making him the world record holder in both engine classes, which is something few players have done in recent years since the driving is very different when driving at higher speeds. Soon thereafter, there would be another contender, who after a year and a half of absence returned to the track. Ronnie was back. The motion glider technique wouldn't be the only new thing in Ronnie's runs. Ronnie discovered two strategies that would help him go extremely close to the pace lock. He did two tricks on the first wave in lap 1, by cancelling a drift to reduce speed before the second trick. He then hopped onto the ramp cut and did a short drift before the boost panel, somehow giving the same effect as a drift trick. And in lap 3, he did the first wave tricks differently for comfort. Then Vonnie went even higher up on the wave, to avoid getting pace locked. If he drove any differently, he wouldn't get the delay trick, and this approach was the last resort to maximizing your runs. Going for max pace. Vonnie barely got the delay trick and landed on the ramp. He then got a really good motion glider and a clean shortcut to end the run, finishing with a new world record of 145.419. In one of Ronnie's previous world records, he drove lap 1 and 2 so amazingly that he chose to drive slower in the final lap, because if he drove this lap too fast, he would have lost the lead because of the final wave's position. The second wave would be higher up, so to get the trick, he would have to take a worse approach the faster he drove. The pace lock was really near. Army and Ronnie both had the potential to max out the track, as the pace lock was only 0.1 away from taking effect. They knew a time faster than 145.25 couldn't be done. There was simply no way to avoid the wave from restricting your pace, as the delay trick gained way too much time for players to skip it. Ronnie's time was amazing. The driving throughout this run was nearly perfect, and getting a run with max pace was incredibly hard to do. There are no indicators of how much you have to slow down or gain to maximize your lead after the pace lock. It requires an incredible amount of game sense and awareness to exit the pace lock on max pace. A player's focus upon reaching it is to not play too safe, but also risk enough since they want to make sure they beat the world record. It was like a game of limbo. Getting a run into lap 3 doesn't happen that often, so how close to the pace lock do you dare to go? Every time you reach it, you have to put the whole run at stake, and decide how early you will aim to reach the wave. Ronnie's time stood for half a year, but when Army returned to the track, he wanted to go lower than anyone before him, up to the pace lock's limit. Army aimed for perfection.
1417 on Ribbon Road is where the room for improvement became minuscule. Army was so close to the limit of the track, and his final lap proved it. He went really high up on the wave to get the trick, and got a near perfect balance of everything. He landed early, and got a really fast empty trick right after. He then landed on the very right edge of the glider ramp, giving a near perfect motion glider, before finishing the run with a flawless shortcut, and a direct line towards the finish. The first max pace world record. A couple hundreds away from perfection, but this run had everything after the pace lock done as good as perfect. One and a half minute of driving exceptionally, and then doing some adjustments to reach the wave at its optimal position, all to get a single shot at max pace. This run was beyond difficult to beat, and if anyone were to bring the record lower, it wouldn't be by having a lead. Improvements from here on out would be small, and they wouldn't be a milestone like this one. If you went any faster, you had to slow down. This is the incredible run where stories end. No course is boundless, and though players discover strategies many times, there will be a limit to how fast players can drive the track at some point. On a track that has a pace lock near the end, the only solution is to get there much earlier than the world record, and face the time loss. One day, a player called Yuta uploaded a run to the leaderboards, and it wasn't the typical achievement players expected. Yuta had found something so unforeseeable, it stunned the community. On December 5th, Yuta revolutionized Ribbon Road, when he revealed the biggest world record improvement in five years. Yuta turned Ribbon Road on its head, improving the incredibly optimized world record by a full second. It was a miracle. He found the biggest pace break the game has ever seen, defeating the pace lock by a long shot. When players saw the screenshot of his time, they couldn't believe it. Even if the pace lock never existed, nobody would get remotely close to that time. Yuta started going for a world record aiming to do what Army did a few milliseconds faster. At the time, he still deemed it impossible to pace break. But one day, out of nowhere, he accidentally got a Kusan trick, a very tricky technique. If you're in a drift and perform a trick the same frame another trick boost runs out, the game fails to decelerate you, preserving the trick boost speed until you land. Cancelling a drift usually loses a lot of speed, but because Yuta coincidentally did a frame perfect press, it made him fly ahead of the player he was racing. Yuta implemented it into his runs, to get ahead of Armin in lap 1. He then did the Kusan trick again in lap 2, extending his lead to half a second. 
and with the lead he had built up, he went for the delayed trick in lap 2, and he made it. When Yuta landed from the glider, he was a full second ahead of Army's run. He then drove lap 3 as fast as he could, and finished with a 144.3, a monumental world record. Beating a world record by a full second is an incredible accomplishment. It means you found something game-changing that nobody before you has thought of. And Yuta's discoveries on Ribbon Road unlocked so much potential on the track, that our projection couldn't have been more wrong. Army and Yuta are still competing for the world record, pushing the track to the strategy's limit once more. Every time the track seemed pushed to its limit, it flipped like an hourglass when new strategies made the limit even lower. And for years, that has made Ribbon Road one of the most inconvenient tracks for players to master. But that's also what makes this track so fascinating. The record has been lowered this far, and who is to say where it will end? The biggest time saves on this track were found by chance, and knowing the nature of the track, this is likely not where it ends. Ribbon Road taught us that the limit is seldom where it seems, and as players get faster, new patterns present themselves, in the most unimaginable ways, and on the most unimaginable waves. Thanks for watching.